Okay, welcome back to the tutorial number two for Visual Studio 2013 and C Sharp Programming Series. When we left on the last video, we had created a WPF uh, application and talked a little bit about the Visual Studio interface and we had changed the title of our window and the size of our window. I should make a note here that although we changed the title of the window down here in the XAML area, we could have just as well changed it over here using the properties window. By clicking in this area here, the properties of what uh, what you want for that window are put into your properties window, and we could have scrolled down here to the title area and changed it just as well in this property windows area to whatever we wanted. As an example, this is new title. And when we click like that, you'll see that now the title has changed to this is new title and it keeps everything nice and neat in there. But we want it to be WPF Hello World. WPF And by doing that, we again change it, and we can see that the properties window was also updated. So there's a couple different ways that you could have done it. When I'm working with WPF and I have the uh, XML area down here to work with, I have a tendency to just change it right down here in the uh, different areas. So now let's get ready to add a few things to our window. We want to create some type of visual interface for our user and in order to do that we need to provide something on the window. It can't just be a blank window obviously that says hello world that would be no fun. So what we're going to add to this window is a text block and we're going to display a message to the user so that when the window opens he'll see this message. So look, go over to your toolbox as I said earlier in video one or tutorial one I like to leave my toolbox open and pinned while working in the uh, layout and uh, user interface area of my application. It, if you did not have it pinned you'll find it over on a tab here to the left or you may need to do window and show whatever you want to see for a window uh, or view, sorry, if you view and then you can say toolbox or whatever you'd like to have being shown, you can select it in that area. For me, the toolbox is over here and I pin it while I'm working in this area. So let's take a text block, which is down here, and we're simply going to drag and drop it into our window area. Now when we do that you can see that in the XAML section it has created the definition of that text block and provided the basic setups. Also when you click and highlight that area you again have your properties window that shows up on the right with all the information and all the items that you can do with that text block. For right now we're simply going to do uh, one thing with this text block and we're going to change the attribute of text for the text block. So I'm going to just move the return over here in the window to make it easier to see but you can see that the text currently is text block. Let's change that to select a message option and then press display. So by changing that now we've uh, we've changed what we have in that text block and it has expanded. Now with the expansion it may or may not fit that to uh, to do that but you have control handles that allow you to adjust it so that you can have it any way that you like. We're just going to make it so that it displays it across the whole text block. Now also we can select the size of the font. 
if we want to make it bigger or smaller that's very easy to do by selecting our text box area we're going over here to properties and in the properties area we're going to find font and in the font area we have font family we have font size font stretch we can do all this we're simply going to change this to 18 make it a little bit bigger and then we will select again the box and adjust that size so that everything we want is displayed and then move it back over into the center of our window kinda at the top so at this moment in time you should have something that looks like this and we want to make sure that we don't lose any of our work so you can save this now your project by doing one of two things you can use control s you actually more than one of two things you can use control s you can click on this icon up here in the uh, toolbar area that says save all or you can use your file and save all option so for me I usually just click on this icon in the toolbar area which saves everything and allows me to continue so next let's add two radio buttons which we will find over in our toolbox area of course and we will just add one and add two so now we have two radio buttons at the same time you can see down in our XML a uh, XM uh, X a m l area sorry my tongue got twisted there a little bit we have just had two radio buttons added into our descriptions of layouts and items for the page I'm again gonna bring a few things over here just to make it so that we can see and in this area we're now going to make some adjustments to our radio button the first thing is is we're gonna click on this first radio button and we're gonna change what the name property is over here in properties window the reason for that is, is we want to have a uh, individual identifier for that particular radio button so we can just do button one underscore RD I use that as radio uh, or you can you know whatever identifier you'd like RB radio button however you'd like to do it it's uh, it's as long as there's a difference between the two so now when we do that we notice that the radio button has now gained a X name equals button one RB so that has given it a specific identifier that we can use later on when we get ready to code so now I'm going to click down here on the second radio button you can see it's highlighted and we have the name property and we'll just say button 2 and RB radio button once we update that we now have two radio buttons that have different attributes which include now a name identifier so we can now work with both of those and easily identify them individually as we work through it so currently you should have a page that simply has a text block on top two radio buttons and the radio buttons should have identifiers for each one of them so that you know the difference between the two next we want to change the actual text next to the radio button so what we'll do here is again select our radio button that is button 1 RB and we're going to go in our properties window go down to the text line and in that uh, in that text option actually more specifically uh, in this case with WPF it would be the content the content of that radio button is going to change to hello 
and now we have a radio button that has hello we also have the updated uh, information in our in our uh, properties window do the same thing for the second radio button except that we're going to change that one to goodbye So at this point you should have simply a window that has a message on top that says select the message option, hello or goodbye, and we've created this nice little layout that we can use to work with. Next we're going to add a button and what we'll do is the button will create the action after the user has done something, either select hello or goodbye. So in your tools yeah, uh, in your toolbox find button and we're going to drag that on to our window interface and now we've added this button information down here in our XAML section. The content of course here is the button name and we're going to want to change that to to display and the reason that we're going to do that is because once they select something, whatever they select when we press the button, we want it to display. So let's just select it down here in the XAML area, although we could also go over and change it in the content area of the properties. But we will just do it here. And now our button has the word display on our button. So that is the beginning structure of our window if you notice now I'm gonna adjust this to fit all again I can now see my whole window and uh, the general layout I know that I have a new title I have the uh, uh, display message when you first open it up to say select something they select something and then once they select we can press the button that says display so at this point let's go ahead again and save our project. I'm going to go up here and click on the icon that makes everything saved. You can do control S or go to the file menu. But at the end of the day we have now created our user interface window that is going to be displayed when the application first runs and they will be able to select whether they want a hello message or a good my message and then ask to display it. So we're going to end that with here at, or at this point and when we come back in tutorial 3 we're going to start setting up the code and we're going to run the uh, application and we're going to set some breakpoints so that we can see how the code works its way through and that will be in our next tutorial. So thank you very much for joining me for the Visual Studio 2013 C-Sharp Programming Tutorial 2. I'll see you next time.